Hello and welcome to another gameplay review on the Vrakayu Gameplay Channel. And in this one, we are having a look at Graves performed by RNG Way. Yesterday I said EDG Way, that was just a misspeak, obviously, RNG. And I will be looking with these World Brute Campus as we go on a little bit of a cheeky counter invade. I don't know what the Yona is doing, he's got a Yumi attached, it gives him a false sense of confidence. We do have a Rakan as well. Um, I will do coverage of champions that these players are using uh, more so than others in, in solo queue. So he, his most played is Graves. We're seeing a lot of uh, top lane as well as mid lane Graves by junglers when they get filled. Nice little first blood there. And Yumi will just survive. Graves actually gets chunked quite a bit, so you got to watch this. Now, a lot of you will be thinking, ah, oh, GG, that's it, game's over. Come on. You don't actually think that, do you? If you do, that's low elo mentality. That is baboon mental. Don't like it. Mostly because you don't understand gold's reset. You know, the gold is on the Shen. The, the Shen is not reset, so that gold is not spent yet. The Graves also, if he waits to fully heal, which most of you would do in this case, would not arrive to the buff on time, slowing down his first clear. The enemy jungler might look to use that for some kind of, kind of advantage. The big advantage from this level 1 is that Yumi no longer has Exhaust, but Rokan no longer has um, Ignite. And I believe the bot lane is also a world's bot lane. So I don't have, as I said yesterday, a full automated system of, uh, you know, high-end producers and, and, and scripts to tell me who's in what game with all the different um, names. So I'm going to basically go by uh, the player choosing uh, manually. I'll, I'll just manually choose a champion and a player, and you would have seen the runes in your screen. Now, standard fleet footwork, as we are seeing a lot of now since that buff a few patches ago. You can do the Dark Harvest. You can go Ghostblade Lethality Graves. Lord, that brings back bad nightmares, I'm going to say, of Season 8. But the absolute focus always is really, really good for things like Graves, especially for upfront burst damage. Because you have burst combos, you have sustained damage, you have a lot of things at your fingertips as Graves. Now, we're doing a full blue side. In this case, the Hecarim gets leashed top side, so this ward is very good. Um, and all it does will protect you from any sort of level 3 nonsense, which is better against the Rack side, to be honest with you. Uh, if you can get a 1 minute 21 ward here, they would have seen the Hecarim. I'm always going to point this out because I think it's so huge for Clash this weekend. You guys playing Clash? Structure a level 1 strategy that allows you to 5 point defense against invades. Um, if you just want to be safe. But you could have some kind of cohesive look. And maybe leaving a ward here at around 121 um, with your mid laner. And basically that will give you all the tracking you need as a jungler. And to extrapolate the entire other game. There, there will be nothing you cannot do just from that one ward. Does he go... Red Raptors blue side, we see it. Does he go Red Krugs Raptors? We see it. But Graves in the meantime, a little bit of a slower start. The clear is not as, uh, I can't believe I'm saying this, as fast as Talons. And in the meantime, as the Hecarim, he's also finished by around 317, which is a little bit slow to be honest with you. Ah, it's okay. It's pretty, it's solid. Um, he does go into the river, not realizing that the Graves started top side. He's walking into his doom, it looks like. Yeah, that's, that's, that's his doom. Why? And this is what I'm talking about. It's not difficult. The Hecarim Rainbow Bud. What are you doing, my friend? We know that Graves decided to do this. We can see mid laners rotating first. You, they have but prior. Give up the crab, son. Give it up. Go back to base. Take this crab instead. Maybe you can contest a tier 2 Grump Steel if the Graves flirts with wasting time down on the bottom side. Why are you dying for this crustacean? Stop it. All of you, stop it. If you don't have the prior and you're going to get collapsed, Leave. <laughs> Thumbs up to the speech. <laughs> Honestly. Um, that was nice. You just see the smoke screen just wipes all the babies out. It's so satisfying. So now, look at the pings from... E uh, from R see, I'm doing it again. RNG way. Look at it. You see it. He knows. The Hecarim died. He's going straight up to top crab. The Rakan knows this because he's also a good player. Uh, pro players tend to be a bit more intelligent about these kinds of things. But there's no reason why any of you can't do this either. You want to know why? Because it doesn't require anything other than simple extrapolation. And you don't really have to think about your champion while you're doing that. And what Graves provides in terms of raw carry potential and what way in most Graves players, everyone thinks of Canyon, obviously, um, from Worlds last year, but that, they forget that's because his Nidalee was pretty much, you know, no one wanted to face it. Uh, it. It's map control. And if the jungler makes the wrong decisions like Rainbow Bud, <laughs> it's quite a funny name. It's like a, I envision... I envision him as, as a Labrador, you know? <laughs> uh, um, there you go, anyway. You can keep clearing, you can counter jungle. If someone makes a mistake, and if they have lane prior, what are you going to do about it? And that's what Worlds was. Dom would just draft lane prior, and Canyon would say, 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no one can rotate, so thank you. I take this, you know, and then you fall back to your jungle. You just, it's just complete suffocation of experience. And I love this as well. So if we do a five camp, and then we do stuff, and then we fall back to Krugs and reset, what, mean, what that means is if you don't want to do anything else other than resequence, you're going to go boof, 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 but there's going to be a timer between the Raptors and the Krugs. So because we know where Hecarim is and that he's behind on tempo now because of his mistake and our punishment of said mistake, we can cut in, do the, 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 the dragon, the dragon, and then maybe look at the bottom lane. And what's nice is, even if it wasn't intentional, this is good, this is good, this is good by Hecarim. This is good, we'll talk about this in a second. Even if it was um, not intentional, the bottom lane could always let it push in in that moment. Nice auto for the wall to get the kill. Yone is TPing in, swooping it up with 300 years of design because 200 years just isn't enough to justify what that champion is. Nice counter by the red team. Nice counter. I like that. The Hecarim would full sequence. Okay, he would full sequence and then know that once the dragon was secured, ah, he's going to look bottom lane because it's pushing. So he decides to lane gang, counter gang. And this is something I think a lot of you should think about as well. Um, even if things don't go well at the beginning of the game, simply look to see with the jungler and what he's going to do. What is he going to do? What can he do because you cannot match him? Okay, how do I predict this and cut it off? And guess what? If he doesn't gank in the bottom lane there and uh, you lane gank and they decide to sort of commit into a 2v2, you can counter it. Now again, lasandra has been rotating a lot. We didn't see that. Let me reverse this just a little bit for you. Um, you know, the, the Lissandra's using a pride to rotate a lot and obviously getting things done. But now, because of all of this, and there being nothing on the side, the Hecarim would have reset, and he will try and secure what's up here. There's an RNG crab. The Graves is going to be here. What we can do is then, of course, gank mid lane. And if she has no flash, no ultimate, you just have to tr interrupt her E, which you can do with the fear, then you can knock her back, and there's just nothing left for her to do. Graves does Graves things, which is... <laughs> you died. I take the crab, though, so it's okay. It's worth it. See ya. There's nothing you could do there, objectively. Um, but a lot of times when, it, when a Hecarim does this or a jungler does this to your lane, what you guys are doing is not this. You, you, you don't take the uh, crab. You know, can I counter gank this? No. Can I rotate to it? No. Can I take something while he's busy? Yeah, I can take this. Then I can hold the mid lane and clear this ward, which denies any sort of vision of, of what might be happening when the wave's pushed up. And now you can fall back. And that's a huge amount of experience that he's gained. Now, he'll be seven on this blue side easy. And the Hecarim is going to fall back to this, just hitting six on the on the Krugs. And now he can full sequence that and maybe look to go bottom side. But Wei can just say, all right, back to my jungle, map control. Two on one, 58 to 50. The Hecarim is doing a solid job, but eventually Graves is going to start to speed up a lot. We do have the Noon Quiver here with the Vampiric Scepter. Um, there are a variety of build parts. You can go, you can go Eclipse, Shield Bow, you can go into a more Lethality based uh, build if you want, or Crit. Really, it's it's down to the Grace player and how fed you get. Uh, pretty much. Right. Blue side complete. Now, you, maybe you're thinking, well, could we not have done the Herald? And I think that there is a, a point here where we can say, yeah, we, we might have been able to do that. But if Loses Q Gwen as top side with Pryo. Uh, I think I think as Hecarim here, I might even look like obviously he sequenced down as as you saw from the vision toggle, but you could have maybe looked to sneak this. One of them could have maybe looked to sneak that. I think that's huge, honestly. Um, the downside there is if you spend time taking that Herald and Hecarim sees this and it's warded and you don't have a scanner up or control ward and then ganks bottom lane or, or counter jungles you. There can be some longer term effects of it. So while we have control of the map, might as well just keep control of the map. You would have seen this in the video on the main channel where uh, it was Tian, I think. Yeah, on, on, on the Talon. No, not on the Talon, on the Leeson, but also the Talon, where they just kind of, they had such a big lead. They just managed to control everything. They didn't really force objectives that were needed to win the game. But in most of your games, I think you could look for Katia. And the Hecarim obviously is going to go bottom side. This, this is just what Hecarim does. And th this is exactly what I said. He is anticipating 100% the Grace full sequencing and he's ready to counter gank. And if a 2v2 in, uh, happens, you can simply gank it. This is exactly what we said could happen earlier. And this time, Wei saw is boarded. Lissandra going back to mid lane. Hecarim says, you know what? Thank you for that. I appreciate, I enjoy. Yone says, well, there's nothing I can do bottom lane. I might as well dive top lane. 
Shen did have ult up, but it doesn't really matter in that case. It's a doom scenario. Gwen dies anyway. Nice turnaround. What do we do as junglers in this situation? You might feel like, uh Things are, um, you know, falling a little bit sideways. Uh, Hagrim got a gank off bottom lane. They died. Uh, Yone and Rome to the top lane. They died. Relax. Relax. And it, you saw level one. Level one. If you thought the game was doomed at level one, this is showing uh, some, some, maybe some naivete or some inexperience. Look at this. Lissandra again, rotations. Nice ult there. Flash for flash. Mm, it's unfortunate, but it was close. Now, though, Shen is bottom lane. He he altered that. If we if you would have if you were paying attention to that as well. Sorry, I don't have I don't have that that stream of money for for proper production. I'm a solo person with a minimal viewership in comparison. So we're having the scuffed setup. I try to make a nice appearance um, for the world's the vods. But yeah, I definitely think we can go for the um, the herald there. Obviously, Gwen and Hecarim, if they do rotate, that is something. The Yone will be up. But the Shen is rotating to cover us, the, the, the Sandra's here to cover us. And obviously with the Vampiric Scepter, with the lifesteal of Shield Boats, the itemization is finished. We can secure that. Now, here's where things get particularly interesting versus low elo players. High elo players, obviously here it's just safer to sequence. Um, if you've got a lot of gold, mega cash monies, we can reset. Here he's got 350, so there's no point. We can simply sequence down to the Raptors and cover this dragon. We can cover this dragon. But you do have to play according to the lane states, you know? Forcing mid with, with a Herald here, not really optimal. Yeah, it gives you this, but you're not really elevating the game state by rushing the Herald usage so fast. So, game flow, control, patience, all of these things uh, mean a lot for Graves. So he does three camps, gets level 9. Now he's looking. If we can gank this, kill him, then we can activate the Herald and take four plates in the tower, maybe fall back to the Dragon. In this case, bot lane has prior. We have cleared the wards. We can execute a little bit of patience. There's not much else for us to do on the map. Let's see if Losandro can go and hit the ult. He does. We flash. We hit our smoke screen, and that's a dead Yone. Well played. And now we can use the Herald. Thing is, though, you're most likely going to lose pressure for the... See, the, the Losandro doesn't want to flirt with, with death here with the... Um... <laughs> with the Hecarim. She saw the Hecarim. She knew he was coming, but I, I think she's being way too, too cautious here. I mean... There's a lot of gold here to be had. I mean, that's all you're look, really looking for. It's just gold pressure. Because now we can reset. Okay. Now we could reset, spend our gold, and then look for a bot play and a dragon play. The Hecarim decided that this was too vanilla for him. Uh, he wanted some leather straps, a bit of uh, a few chains, maybe. Um... Maybe a whip, and he BDSM'd himself to death for some reason. I mean, guys, hold the tower by all means, but why die? Here now, the problem is, the Hecarim died, he's respawned. The Yone died, he TP'd in. The Lissandra went back to base, has TP, doesn't want to waste it. The Shen does have uh, TP plus ult. We have now uh, 2,000 gold in pocket. You can't do the dragon. I think this is forced. I think once, once that happens, we just have to base. Botlane goes, uh, you know, mega fighting once more. Condemn, dead, good. Every Yumi that dies is um, is an influx of happiness in the world. My world. <sighs> so unskilled. I mean, there's there's skilled Yumi players, but that you know, it's like saying this this skilled footballer is in middle school. Okay, Hecarim is now going to gank the bottom lane again. Shen hold. Okay, wait. No, hold up. I didn't want this. Okay, the alt taunt was very nice. I like that. So now, basically, when this happens, when you have a Shen or a macro top laner, understand that you need to counter jungle. See, that? look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Vision control is important. Watch this. Okay. Need to take a longer edge. See, there he disappears. But he was not disciplined enough around the Fog of War edge on this um, uh, uh, pancake ward. So, you know, just around. Well, it's more like, a, more like a black hole into the crustacean's void. You got like a little bit of an accretion disk, you know what I mean? But you got to stare around the outside and then eat through that way. Uh, because he didn't and he wasn't disciplined, it's been pinged. They know where he is. There's a lot of help saying, help me, help me, help me. 
Yone and Lissandra's backing now with no TP. Lissandra's backing with no TP. I think he realizes um, that this is inherently risky because Yone's disappeared and he knows that the Hecarim's up. Okay, Yone shows bottom side onto the uh, the Rakan. Boom. They decided that they're not even going to contest it. And this is what he was waiting for. Visual conf confirmation. He didn't just go straight into the red. Everyone was MIA on the map. And now instead of taking his red in this and maybe diving top lane, protect your house. Because the, the Hecarim thinks he's being super smart. You know? But we all know what's going on because of the, that ward. TP from Shen as well. Okay, Yumi's detached. Hecarim's here. We get the Everfrost stun. Stunned once more. Graves goes over the wall. He lost a lot of HP from the Yone. Doesn't matter. Hecarim gets caught with his hand in the Oreo jar. Yumi dies from an explosion of the highest order. Vayne rotates as well. Thank you very much. Gets a free blue buff. He can finish off this red. That was a good section. Too many times, a lot of you will simply take this stuff and, and negate this. This is this is a game-winning play. And now, now she kills... Uh, Kills the Lucian. I, I, it's not Deft, is it? It's not Deft, Iceland Winter. I, 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 I can't remember. I think Deft is... No, no, Deft is something else. Deft is something about the cold, though. Did he change it? I can't remember. Um, yeah, Canyons was positive. You know, Aurora time. He, he understands that he's in a unique part of the world. And then <laughs> everyone else is talking about how cold it is. Okay, so we fall back up. Sequence upside. We see this great ward. Great ward there. It usually dies pretty quickly, but if they don't check it, or they walk over it because they don't expect it, excellent vision. We're just shadowing here in case there's some kind of uh, shenanigans. Back to base, 413 collector completed. TP again. Well, this is an active game. The Gwen arrives. The Yumi on the Hecarim. I cannot imagine something more tilting than a Yumi on a Fed Hecarim. Gwen. Okay, Grace is rotating, which is the right play. Normally, we would try to do this. And if you can arrive in time, that's great, but um, don't force it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Don't force it. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I'm, the first oh, no was because I thought the Lucian overcommitted and he was going to get eradicated. Then I said, oh, no, because it's warded and they're just going to 3v1 fork the graves. Right? Right? You guys get it? You get it, right? You get it. Um, Gwen's in the area. See, now we're just looking. There's no camps on the map. There's no objectives. Set traps. Use the vision control. Oh, you are dead. One shot, baby. One shot. And again, now you stick to him. You've got fleet footwork. Alt used. I mean, you didn't even need the alt in the first kill. The damage is insane. And, and, and shield bow is an item. I don't mind graves building it, but when things like... Um, long range ADCs like an Ash builds shield bow and wits end, and you just can't really kill them. I hate it. <laughs> what tower? I am Graves. True grit passive. Always remember, right? Um, keep stacking that passive uh, when you clear and so on. The Gwen seemingly doesn't take any damage whatsoever. The Graves is forced to flash into health. Uh, we do have the exhaust ignite Graves's zizzes, but I do think flash is always just more useful. Yeah, don't don't eat my crab, thank you. Way says I enjoy, and now we take uh, the scuttle crabs, long distant relative, like raptors to chickens, I suppose. Dragon will be spawning. I do kind of want to make sure we have that control, but again, is it really going to help us win the game? In most elos, yes, it's a mental thing as well. But sometimes when you have big leads. What matters more is just keeping that lead than giving a few stats away. But you know me, I prefer the objective ping pong. I think perma control of objectives while farming is always the dream. But we do have to play the map. So now we're going to reset again. 2,100 gold in pocket. It's always, you know, pushing the limit of, of how long you want to stay out. Hecarim on Yumi. Alt. Knockback. And Lissandra Yeetsin has managed to actually do it this excellent. She dies. And now they're super low. And they all die. So... This is realistic. Yes, most of you are aware of this. This is what happens to you. It's okay, I know. You go back to base to spend all your uh, all your riches, and then your whole team dies. And you're like, guys? But, c'est la vie. This is what happens. Now, Yone is just gonna snack on that, 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 that dragon, no problem. Chen is gonna crash down. We do have a Yumi on a Gwen with a Yone rotating up. Do not pull the trigger on this. Do not, uh, you know, vacuum your eyesight into that. Do not, uh... Vacuum your eyesight, yeah. A great, good one. I, I said vacuum instead of um, tunnel vision, so I just went with it. It's kind of the same thing, though. Tunnel vision, you just see one thing with nothing else on the side. 
Vacuum is like, it just sucks your face in. It sucks your mind into this one reality where you have to chase. I think it works. Yeah, we can use that again. See, look, see, look at the pressure. When you don't have the lane prio, when you, when you don't have just Puma pushing the map, uh, you want to make these places, Graves, but you, you can't always, right? You can't always. But if there's no farm, no objectives, you have to look, probe, scan, use your e-mobility, look for those traps, and sometimes it requires patience. Always it requires patience. Staring at the map, nothing to do, rain reset. This is fine. This I don't mind this game state, because I... You have to feel very comfortable. You have to be very comfortable in your champion and, and in your discipline. See here, we saw on the vision, so now I'm worried, okay, they're gonna be stealing the red, they're gonna be doing this. So Graves says, okay, I know that. Whoopsie. And you can see the gold here, seven, four to nine, five. And he didn't get killed, the Hagarim. But, I mean, he's tried his best, you know, but it's all started at level one. It's a lot of gold, man. It's just a huge lead. I wish I could figure out a way to get the, um, that live gold count graph. But I don't know if I can do that. I've increased the scoreboard size manually. I've got two layers on OBS. This is this is good by the red team. You see the two top with the herald activation. So they're just gonna shove it down mid lane. What we can do is collapse. Let's see. Let's see. Let's observe what transpires. Mm-hmm. Push them down, push them down, push them down. They're all bottom lane, which means we could in theory, and I think most of you who are, um, who have the ability to witness, you can see that they're going to go back now, and maybe they can snack this, this Baron. I wonder if that's exactly what happens. I wonder if they just go straight forward, because <laughs> you've grazed vein. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Shen's bottom lane, Lissandra's mid lane, and then the pings go through. Wait, could they be on it? Could they be on it? Hits the plant. Thank you, Rakan. Basically, he knows what's going to happen. He zones them with his ult. That Q kind of missed the Baron. Smite, get out. Beautifully done. Use that. Use this. Did you see that? Right. We pushed them with the Herald a little bit. They, they counted our pick. They took two inner towers mid and bot. Now, they're going to go spend their gold full back. Take the Baron. And it's, it's that snap decision. Um that allows you to actually just take control of games. And too often, people don't do it. Too often they don't do it. Right. So is he Hecarim on the Grump? We're eating into the mid lane a little bit. We just want to push up now. I mean, they've only taken two out of turrets. In terms of the turret game, it's five to two. So I think here we need to start using this Baron just to push out to control the map a bit more. Um, but don't force it once more. We can start to speed run a little bit because things aren't going to be too exciting. Uh, if they decide to fully unengage and overcommit because they are not patient, stun them, kill them, obliterate them, destroy them, kill the Yumi. Ah, she jumped into the Hecarim. Sad. That'll give us a push on the bottom lane, a push in the mid lane. Ah, uh, this tower, man. That's 100% uh, secured. And then we can fall back to the Baron. So... The difference between teams. Red team gets a little bit impatient. Blue team has patience. And as soon as they commit, they overextend. Pick them off. Excellent. And now, you're going to see very much on the timeline that they're just going to control the jungle. Hecarim's trying to get in here. What is he doing? See, this is what I'm talking about. Why are you even there, sir? Rainbow Bud. Rainbow Bud. I kind of like it on Volibear too. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so nothing really happens for a few minutes. They just kind of posture and we're going to repeat the process. And that's how you close games when you don't have an overwhelming advantage to be able to anti-siege, to push lanes. And you, maybe you're a little bit nervous about a straight up 5v5. This is normal stuff. But again, take your camps, ward control, look for the pick. Baron's going to be up very, very soon within the minute. Boom. Beautiful. Beautiful. And it's uh, PSG River, the vein. There we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now we can move into their jungle. And this is where things start to open. So we have here a Hecarim, four-man squad on the bottom lane, making this pick equally. But we have two people pushing the mid lane. Wave is coming in. This wave is also here. We could look to, to uh, inhib for inhib, but they're four-man pushing with a, with a cannon wave. So if you try this base race, you lose. You have to base. 
just crashing it is fine. But if they overextend, they don't have Gwen for 15 seconds. They don't have Gwen for 15 seconds. If we can make a pick here, it's great. Or we can go straight to the Baron. So it's a risky call. If they call your bluff and stick around, they can end. So Lissandra stays, and they go straight forward. They don't need anyone else to do it. Once it's very clear that Shen's up and they're not going to be there, look how quickly they do it. Nice macro call. Okay, now be cautious. We have Shen ult available. He's not 16. We kind of want to wait till 16 for that Shen ult, you see? Because it gives you mega extra shields, okay? And the cooldown obviously goes, goes, goes down also. You see this? Goes down another 15 seconds. So waiting for those big plays... Um, around 6, 11, 15, always, always good and juicy. Always. Right. Drake is up. Very nice Drake for Shen. Basically, I think here at this point, we're comfortable just forcing a fight. So let's do it. Let's do it. We're 16 on Graves, 14 on Hecarim, uh, 16 on Shen for the alt. He can split push very easily, no issues there. Let's get some vision control. If they want to really commit to this, we can go in. Let's go, Rakan. Both nice. Just clean auto smite. And then he just died. <laughs> the crit damage, though. <laughs> He's got Lord Dominic's plus an infinity edge. It's not okay. I mean, it is okay. It's not what he's fed, but it's just funny. Oh, my goodness. The Hecarim the heck just, just bye. Bye. I mean, I... I don't know why he's gone Black Cleaver. I mean, I know why he's gone Black Cleaver, but in this case, were you in a position to build like this? Man, <laughs> good night. And now this nice collapse into the Yone. Chain CC is the best way to live your life. Right, Super Wave bottom line. Don't, don't, don't be afraid to catch this. This is good experience for you as well. And uh, I don't know, maybe you can go into a Zeal item, I suppose. Interesting to see what he would go into. Another BF Sword, why not? Ah, Black, uh, Bloodthirster, right? We can do that also. Or you can, of course, do a, a GA. If, if you're particularly worried about survivability. But when you're level 1 forward, I don't think we really need to be worrying about that. But the lifesteal synergy with um, the rest of the kit is kind of strong. Again, they're trying to commit onto the Shen. Rakam, beautifully done. Nice. Very nice. The damage is just funny. And now push up the super wave. You have Baron, you have Numbers Advantage, and you have uh, mid lane dealt with, with the Shen. Push up the super wave. Alright, Baron's run out now, but we can still keep pushing this. And if they misplay it, we can probably end. There you go. So, early game control from RNG Way. Very nicely done. Hecarim played perfectly into his hands. If you're a better jungler, you will see these things and you're able to execute it. Great use of downtime when there were no camps. Great use of patience when there were no objectives. Great use of the champion to play with the CC around him to do mega amounts of damage. And um, that's why Graves is just strong. And the black, uh, just as a final note, the BF Sword, when you know you're going to go for like a final push victory, if you have 500 uh, coins, get yourself an elixir. If you have enough for a BF Sword just to go for the maximum amount of damage for that final push, do so. Because it helps you close the game. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're able to enjoy and learn something. Stay tuned for a lot more World Boot Camper Champion crossover gameplay reviews coming very soon. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.